Out the way, seagull. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, you probably wouldn't associate the Porsche 911 with rallycross, but how's this for a fun fact? Here at Lydon Hill in 1967, the very first British rallycross race was won by, you guessed it, a Porsche 911, driven by Quick Vic Elford when it was still a standard road-going press car. Now, of course, these days, thrashing a press 911 around Lydon Hill would be even stupider than back in the 60s. Really, really daft, apart from it won the Dakar. Hello then everybody, uh, welcome to the 911 Dakar, welcome to Lydon Hill and the most disgusting day in Britain you've ever seen. Let's do a brief refresh of this car shall we before I make a huge mess in my pants. Uh, the Porsche 911 Dakar is a lot of, oh it's loud isn't it, it's a lot of 911 GTS so we've got the same 480 horsepower version of the three litre twin turbo flat six. We've got the same PDK gearbox, but obviously we've got some pretty significant off-road additions. It rides 50 mil higher. We've got softer, longer springs. We've got the dampers are completely redone. It can go up, get this another 30 mil to apparently give it, good Lord, the same approach and departure angles as a KN. It also comes with its own bespoke set of Pirelli all-terrain tyres. They're 19 inch at the front, 20s at the back. They look cool. They give it this incredible ability. You can have summer and winter as well, but you're not gonna do that, are you? You're gonna keep those, you're gonna look cool. It'll still do 149 miles an hour, and it'll still do 756 around the ring, says Porsche, on those tyres. So yeah, you're definitely gonna keep those. What else is new? Uh, you've got bespoke drive modes for this car. You've got a rally mode and you've got an off-road mode. We're in rally at the moment. It just gives you a bit more, perfect. Gives you a bit more leniency with the modes and a bit more rear bias to the four-wheel drive system. Right now it feels absolutely perfect, I must be honest, because it is so treacherous. You've also got uh, a bit more noise coming through because there's less sound deadening. I'll give you a bit more of that. Sounds cool, sounds old 911-y and cool, I like it. You've got these gorgeous carbon bucket seats from the GT3, you've also got the carbon bonnet from the GT3 as well, you've got lighter glass. A few sort of weight saving things to offset the four wheel drive, off roady bits and the additional protection. So it's only 10 kilos heavier than a normal GTS, which is pretty cool because there's a lot of stuff on here to make it so formidably capable off-road. To only be 10 kilos heavier, it's quite the achievement. What's it like? Uh, well, I've never driven a Carrera GTS off-road before, but <laughs> these are really the first minutes I've had in the car. So you're getting it raw. I'm somewhere I've never ever been in a 911 and never will be again, but it definitely, definitely still feels like one. Um, oh my goodness, it's so slippery. It's telegraphing things really, really well. No doubt outside this will look really slow, but in here I'm quite busy, but I know, I know when the front is pushing, I know to lift, I can feel it, he says, sideways on the way to the jump. You can feel what it's doing. It's communicating with you like every good 911 should. It's just communicating with you about mud and grit and horrible wet cold tarmac oh god this is a, such a miserable day hey it's a rally cross day we'll call it that it's a rally cross day i'll tell you what's really really lovely with this car as well in these conditions is because you've got less grip than a gts on p zeros or a gt3 on cup twos you can just feel 911-y things more, you know, it'll turn in and it'll move and off-road obviously makes things more engaging, but a little less grip does as well. And you know, you've just got to, that would never ever happen in a GTS. You've just got a little more to think about, a little more to do. This would be an absolute riot on a track there. I think you could just, you could just rein it in so you wouldn't get in trouble, but just 
you come on, you can just feel things just moving about and smearing around way more than you would in a standard car and that's great that's why people carp on about old 911s isn't it is it is a bit less grip how is it doing this a bit less grip a bit more action just being busier and more involved as a driver and that is exactly what this car is offering you Oh, well, there's some understeer, there's some oversteer. It's so, I can't tell you how slippery it is down here. It is so slippery in the bottom of the bowl, it's ridiculous. Can you be sensible about this car? Can you be sensible? I think so. What can you be sensible about? Oh, the, the external stickers, the 18 grand rough roads thing. That's ridiculous. Apparently loads of people are getting it. I don't know why, I think it looks silly. It's meant to look like a 953. I don't get it, don't have that. That's another 18 grand. And that's it, I can't be sensible. Would it be better with a GT3 engine? <laughs> Would it be better with a GT3 engine? Oh, I feel like most cars ever made ever would be better with a GT3 engine, but this definitely gives you the torque. It sounds brilliant. Um, I've certainly, I've got no complaints. I just feel like you have to mention that, don't you, when dealing with the expensive 911s, the GT3 has to come off at some point, but today, today I don't want to be going any quicker. I don't want to be anywhere else but a rainy Lydon Hill. I don't want to be driving anything but a 911 Dakar. I just want to be doing this all day until the petrol runs out till Harry's batteries run out. Oh my goodness, till I have to be told to stop. It's, yeah, it's 911 y but it just feels just that tad bit more accessible and ridiculous at the same time. It's been so long since the 911 has put a smile on my face like this car has. And yes, I know the Rallycross track is doing that as well, but it's just a giggle, isn't it? It's a 911 made into a rally car. Oh, that's third gear. It looks cool, it drives brilliantly. Um, it makes you feel brilliant, like, I know other 911s do skids, but I like these skids more. Would I buy a Dakar? Hell yeah, I'd buy a Dakar. Yeah, it's more expensive than a Turbo S, and it's not as fast as a Turbo S, and a GT3 will be quicker around a circuit, but I've honestly never had so much fun in the 911, just having things move around and stuff going on in a new 911 is just unheard of and I like it you know I just love how it looks and I love what it represents and I love that it's Porsche just having a bit of a laugh but doing it with such skill and finesse and sophistication like they always do I the ride and the composure over here is just bonkers like yeah, I want one. I want one a lot and I'd use it for every possible thing that I could. I want to, you know, drive my son to nursery in it. Oh, I think our tyres are wearing out, you know. Well, actually, it wouldn't fit. There's no Isofix. There you go. Don't buy a Dakar if you need to put a child seat in because you've got carbon seats and they can't go in there. Yeah, I want to cruise in it. I want to do track days. I want to do everything in it because it does all the 911 things while doing all these cool rally raid Dakar things. And yeah, it, it feels like one hasn't come at the expense of the other. It doesn't feel too much like a 911. It doesn't feel too much like a raw motorsport car. Like Porsche tends to do, it's really, really struck the balance perfectly. It doesn't feel too much one thing, too much the other thing. And I suspect that it's a very, very hard thing to do it's a very easy thing to appreciate and enjoy but i suspect engineering this sort of usability and sense of purpose together in one thing is very very difficult and yeah it's been done expertly well as you might expect normally i'd like to say if you're getting one then you must use it but quite frankly you do whatever you want with your dakar congratulations on an awesome car and I think whatever you do with it, you're going to absolutely love it.